talking about adding some chat GPT like sprinkles to your app. Like we're, we're not talking super involved things that require a PhD in data science. We're talking things that just require you to call an API. Um, so here I've got a Remix app running and then we've got this really basic demo where we're going to ask ChatGPT to say hi to you all out in the audience. So let's pray to the demo gods that we're online here. Waving hand as an AI, I may not have a physical presence, but I promise to keep you engaged with my virtual wit and charm. Let's rock this demo together. Robot face, computer, party popper. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> thank you. So that's kind of a silly demo, but there are actual legitimate use cases that are small little quality of life improvements that you could add to your app. Um, if you choose to do that, uh, here's, the, here's the steps that you would take to, to do that inside of a Remix app. So to start with, it's just an API call to the OpenAI endpoint, and you specify your API key in the authorization header. You set up a request body where you specify the model, and then the last thing you do is in that request body, you pass a messages array, and that's where you stick your prompt. Then you'll get back a JSON response, and what you're interested in is this choices.message.content. That's where you're going to find the, the text of what ChatGPT said. So if we use this in Remix, we'd wrap that fetch request that we just created up above, we just wrap it in an action. And then that lets us kind of take the prompt from form data and also secure our API key behind a server. From the UI perspective, we could start with a built-in form, lowercase form, right? It's got a text area and a submit button. And then we'll cut over to a fetcher so that when we submit, it's not a navigation event. Instead, we'll, we'll take that fetcher data, which is our ChatGPT response, and display it right underneath the form. So that's not much to it, right? But once you do that and you start doing some, some real things, especially like interactive with the user, you're going to find some performance things. Typically, when you make an API request, if you request like three things versus 30 things, you would not expect that to be drastically different, different from a performance perspective. But when you work with these large language models, the, the way that they work under the covers means that the number of words in the response is linearly proportional to how long it's going to take for that response to complete. So 10 times more words in the response means it's going to take 10 times longer. This is why anytime you see a chatbot demo, right, they pop the words in one at a time and it's really frustrating to us because it feels like they're teasing us, but they don't actually have the whole message yet. The best they can do is stream the words in one at a time as the LLM figures it out. So if we wanted to do that in our app, all we got to do is add this stream equals true flag to our API request. So here's the exact same demo we had before, but now with the stream equals true, Oh, no dice. So it's not that easy. Um, if we look at the, the network tab of that request, it didn't like fall over. We get a 200, but we've got this new content type. It's not JSON, it's text event stream. Um, so we're talking about service sent events again, right? Service sent events are a built in API. It's not a remix thing, it's not an open AI thing. Um, the two things to keep in mind, though, are the event stream. That's what the server sends, so OpenAI is going to take care of that for us. And the event source, that's a built-in browser API to consume an event stream. So that's what we need to do inside of our Remix app to consume that word-by-word -word, uh, stream of, of data from our LLM. So the kind of the pattern here would be on our form component, we'll set up an event source. We'll point that at a Remix resource route who will then proxy everything to OpenAI, and OpenAI will start streaming those events to us. Each event is going to have a, an event.data, which is going to be a JSON string. And then in that JSON string, for each new word of the response, we're going to get this JSON string, and we're interested in the choices.delta.content. So in our re Remix app, we'd flip from an action to creating a new file for our resource route, change it into a loader because event sources only allow git requests, and set stream equals true. And then on the browser, we're going to add this new function, handle GPT stream. So we'll take in a prompt, which is our text, and an on-data callback to call every time we get a new word from our response. And then when we do receive an event, the first thing we want to check is, 
is it done? Like that's, OpenAI will send an event data of square bracket done when the response is complete and we know we can close the, the connection. Otherwise, we just wanna parse that event.data and we wanna pull out that delta.content and invoke our callback, passing in that new word to, to the caller. So then in the UI, we've got our form. We're gonna add an on submit. We're gonna pull out the prompt from the form data and call that function we just created up above, handle GPT stream. And then the last thing to do is kind of wire that all up to component state. So every time we receive a new word, we're just gonna to append to some component state and display it underneath the form. And with that, we're down to our last demo. So let's, uh, how should I say goodbye and walk off? Let's pray to the demo gods here. Thank you all so much for being attentive and engaging throughout the presentation. It's been a pleasure to share with you all how to leverage the power of the Remix framework in building React.js applications. Have a great day. Thank you. Woo!